water is used to keep country parks green. In an effort to ensure adequate water supplies, wells are drilled ever deeper. This private country park gets his water from a well which is 54 meters deep. This is two meters below the sea level and it allows salinity to filter into the water table. People will pay a lot for a place in the sun, but they want it all ways. Green enclaves and green golf courses. According to the UN Water Report, a golf course uses as much water as a town of 10,000 people. But there are some attempts being made to eke out supplies. For instance, the Costa Ballena golf course has been designed to use recycled water from the town's sewage plant. Our water source comes from uh, the village of Rota, so all the grey um, water coming from there, uh, we process it in a plant that is about five kilometres from here, and from there what we do is we bring it in here and we treat it for a third time, and that's the water that we use to irrigate the golf course. At the moment, we're using approximately 6,000 cubic metres per hectare per year. This is about half of what is usually used on a golf course such as this. When it comes to the irrigation, it is all computerised with all the data from our weather station right here, telling us what our water needs will be for that day. Although tourism has placed the drain on water supplies, Incredibly, 88% of the total water supply used in southern Spain goes to agriculture, according to the UN Water Development Report. Right now, water consumption in the agricultural sector is highly inefficient, often based on a production system and based on economic incentives for certain crops that does not reflect the reality of a water-constrained region in many parts of Spain. Semi-arid adapted crops, like these sunflowers that can survive just on rainwater, are grown less and less. So nearly all of that demand is accounted for by water-guzzling cash crops, such as cotton. This is a traditional dryland crop. The sunflower crops in the dryland style are called secano. It doesn't need additional water, just the rain is enough. In this side, there is the cotton crops using water to increase productivity. Cotton growing is economic, as the price farmers pay for water is between 20 and 100 times less than the cost paid by households or by industrial users. Partly, as farmers are charged not by quantity, but by the area of land the water irrigates. We must be reasonable from an economic point of view. And that doesn't make sense to receive water for irrigation and to pay by hectares and not by cubic meters. And the cost, the real cost we need for making this cubic meter available at that point is more than 20 times more. Where the soil is too low in nutrients to sustain crops, even with the additional water, they are grown in these polytunnels. Salads, vegetables and flowers are grown inside these vast greenhouses, in some areas covering the land as far as the eye can see. Some have closed water systems. Others rely on well water from the aquifers. In some parts of the province, extraction has exceeded the recharge from rainfall. The aquifers that have nurtured farming for 4,000 years are going dry. Alfredo is visiting Simon Ramos, a flower grower. Have you used underground water a lot here? Here we've always used the water from the aquifer, but it was overexploited. It used to be very good water, but now we have canal water. Over the last 10 years, the issue of water has got worse. You can forget the aquifer, it's been shot. The problem is salinity levels which are now at three or three point something. It is impossible to use this for irrigation. There was no type of control here and everybody drilled a well as they wanted. But the real problem is the lack of planning for production and commercialization. 
We all just produce like crazy. I think people have thrown the towel. People are selling their land. There's a lot of new building going on. For 40 years, the single most dramatic change to affect the Spanish landscape has been construction, fueled by the tourist industry, and it shows no sign of abating. There was a 50% increase in tourists in the five years up to 2003. Spain has the second largest tourist industry in the world, with 52 million visitors each year, according to government figures. In developed countries, the issue of desertification is more concerned with loss of soil through construction. In Spain, we lose 50,000 hectares per year to building. The problem is exacerbated by buildings and wells constructed without planning permission, says the former mayor. All these houses with no planning permission in the country, high up on a hill. There is no water up there. But nevertheless, they have water, because a house with no water has little value. We all know this. They have illegal wells. The idea of urban planning is still a very theoretical practice. People go ahead without any type of planning, avoiding or ignoring all environmental considerations. Buildings put up without permission often means there is no rubbish collection or civic sanitation. Once pristine beaches are covered in rubbish, and it's the local residents who pay the price. We've been coming here since we were kids, 20 years, and it's getting worse. Look at the area around us. Sewage from the houses is dumped into septic pits. In time, these leak into the groundwater and contaminate the aquifers. Tap water in some parts of the region, such as Seville, is undrinkable. People, such as the former mayor of Algodonales, see the only chance in a government getting tough and getting a vision of a future where all is not squandered for short-term gain. This is a huge challenge. What are we going to do in 10 years' time? We need a vision for the future, not just now or for the next elections. I think planning is the most important thing because it will impact so much uh, the development, you know, anything that is well planned, it will be sustainable, uh, it will have future. Build a proper infrastructure, dealing with waters, soil, the whole thing. It is not that expensive and stop all this building, just to make more money. Keep what we have and make it right and proper. Water use should be dependent on the suitability of the land. If not, Spain will suffer from increasing desertification. This can only be achieved by planning sustainable solutions in advance, not by reaction to problems after they arise. People should realize that water is a precious and a finite resource.